Mom sells baby's crib. Buyer returns and tells her to look in the trunk. Ricky watched while his wife inspected the crib he'd bought. He thought that she was being too critical of his purchase, like always. Then he heard her let out a cry of terror that would fit right into a horror film. Ricky sprinted over to his wife to see what the matter was, but when he saw it, he could see why she shrieked. He could feel his pulse start to race. Valerie Smith was extremely happy when she found out that she was with child. Even though she wasn't with the father of the child anymore, she was still excited to find a new chapter in her life. But Valerie had no idea how her world would change soon enough. A year after her pregnancy, Valerie needed money, and so she decided to clear out some of her clutter at the same time. She had a yard sale, and amongst the things she looked to sell, she noticed her crib in the corner of the room. She knew it was time to sell it. She posted an ad for it online, but she had no idea that there was a detail about the crib that was truly horrifying. In the same town, there was a carpenter by trade named Gerald Kumpula and his wife named Laureen. They noticed the ad for the crib and knew their granddaughter would need one for her pregnancy. It looked perfect. It was the right price and was good and sturdy. They thought it would be a bargain, but they didn't know what they were actually paying for. The elderly couple decided it was perfect and called Valerie to arrange a pickup. They didn't want to wait and would pick it up as soon as possible. Valerie was happy and told Gerald to come and get it in his trunk, but he didn't expect what would come next. When Gerald got there, he saw Valerie coming to greet him. She was dragging the crib along with her and it looked in great order. Why was she selling it? He tried to be friendly and asked Valerie what her child's name was. She seemed to ignore the question. What was her problem? He asked her one more time what her child's name was. Maybe she didn't hear the first time. It's not like the question was a delicate one. She hesitated and then quickly said, Noah. Gerald didn't really believe her. It was the way she looked down at the ground when she said it. Gerald then smiled politely, but Valerie did anything but smile back. She then asked him for the cash and then told him to leave. Gerald didn't understand what her problem was, but he still wanted the crib, so he gave her the cash and then put it in his trunk. He had no idea what discovery he'd soon make. Gerald got back home and was excited. He was happy with it and hoped his granddaughter would be just as ecstatic. It was a great gift. But when Gerald's wife came over to inspect the crib, she cried out in terror. Gerald sprinted over to see what the matter was. When he saw what the problem was, he felt his heart jump in his throat. He knew what his next move was. He loaded his truck with the crib and drove straight back to where he bought it. She would have to explain. Gerald arrived at Valerie's home and knocked on her door. A minute later, she answered, looking confused as to what he was doing back. Then she saw her crib, the same crib she'd sold him just a few hours ago. I know about Noah, Gerald said. Straight away, he could see the sadness in Valerie's eyes. It was at that moment then that Valerie revealed the truth to Gerald, and he wasn't prepared for it. You see, when she was more than halfway through her pregnancy, Valerie had started to suffer from backache and stomach pains. At first, she brushed it off as just pregnancy symptoms, but as the weeks went by, she knew something was going on, and she was right. All week I knew something was off, she recalled. I was very nervous. Determined to find out the truth, Valerie went over to the hospital for a checkup. While she was sitting in the waiting room, she had hundreds of questions flooding her mind. She took a deep breath before composing herself. Everything is going to be okay, she said, but she was so wrong. Valerie waited while the doctors conducted their scans and checks on her unborn baby, and she felt sick with nerves. She seriously hoped there was nothing wrong. And finally, the doctors had the results. The umbilical cord, doctors theorized, had become compressed in the womb, making it impossible for the necessary nutrients and oxygen to make it to the fetus. And unfortunately for Valerie, she'd lost her baby. There is so much a parent has to process after learning that they won't be bringing their baby home with them. Not only did Valerie have the mental and emotional side effects of her loss to deal with, she also had to face up to the fact that her home's nursery wouldn't be used. For her, the implications of the empty nursery were just too much to deal with. Valerie was devastated to hear the news. She so badly wanted it to be a nightmare that she was about to wake up from. But this was no nightmare, this was her reality. 
As the weeks passed, Valerie became a shell of herself. She was hardly eating and she hadn't left the house in weeks. Valerie could feel herself sinking further and further. In the days and weeks after her son's tragic passing, Valerie didn't know what to do with herself. She was supposed to be having sleepless nights because her baby was keeping her up, not because her house was eerily silent. It didn't help that there were so many reminders of her child everywhere she looked. But 11 months after her baby passed away, Valerie knew she had to make a change. It was what her baby would have wanted. Valerie missed smiling and laughing. So first on her list was to have a yard sale and get rid of any unwanted items. She came across the crib she'd bought for her baby and felt a lump in her throat. She knew she had to sell it. She didn't need it anymore and perhaps somebody else did. And that was when Gerald and his wife came across the crib advertisement online. Thinking of his own pregnant granddaughter, Gerald bought the crib. And it was only when he had taken the crib back to his home and his wife looked inside that he learned all about Noah and Valerie's horrific nightmare. You see, when Gerald's wife looked inside the crib, she saw something that stopped her cold and made her scream. As soon as Gerald heard his wife, he came over to look at what the problem was. And then he saw it too. Scribbled into the bottom of the crib was R.I.P. Noah, 2019-2020. Straight away, Gerald felt heartbreak and devastation knowing the truth about this crib. He felt guilty for buying it off Valerie as it obviously meant a lot to her. So Gerald knew what he had to do to make things better. He got to work and completely transformed the crib into something spectacular. As parents to 15 children, Gerald and Lorraine knew what a child meant to a young mother, and as grandparents who'd lost a grandchild, they knew at least partially what the loss of a child can do to a family. Gerald and Lorraine agreed that the crib needed to return to Valerie. Still, Gerald knew it couldn't go back to her in its current form. He needed to work his craftsman magic. Gerald brought the crib into his workshop. There, pieces of wood lay on the floor, half-finished benches lined the walls, and one of his more ambitious projects, an ATV made out of PVC pipes, sat amid a daydream-worthy tool collection. The retired grandfather started tinkering away at the little white crib, cutting and measuring the wood, hammering nails and mixing paint. When he finished, he knew that Valerie would be delighted. With incredible handiwork, Gerald turned the crib once relegated to spend a lifetime in the corner of a dark garage into a bright, beautiful bench, a memorial for the beautiful life taken so soon. This, Gerald figured, was the perfect way to honor the boy he never knew. An unused crib is a sad reminder, he said. A bench is more of a memorial. It's part of that sad happening, yet it's not a reminder like an empty crib would be. Valerie offered Gerald money, money for his time, money for his work, money for being so kind in a sometimes painfully cruel world. He declined any payment. It's just nice being able to do something for someone, he said. For most parents, welcoming a baby into the world is a true blessing. However, some people struggle to conceive or experience complications, like Valerie. Sometimes, the services of a surrogate are called on. And for one woman, being a surrogate seemed like a great idea. However, this surrogacy quickly got messy, and for reasons no one could have fathomed in their wildest dreams. Jessica Allen was your average American woman. She was happily married with two beautiful children, but darkness loomed over the couple. They'd recently moved into a new home, however the house ended up costing a bit more than the pair could afford. As such, Jessica made a drastic decision. One day, she saw an advert for people seeking a surrogate. When Jessica saw the compensation, she didn't hesitate to call the couple. But this is where the drama began. Being a surrogate mother can take a lot out of a woman emotionally. When Jessica made the call to become a surrogate, her family weren't sure of the choice. Her husband was unsure of whether she would be able to sever the emotional ties. However, Jessica reasoned that she was in a sound enough headspace to deal with that when it happened. But she had no idea just how emotionally attached they'd both become to the baby. Wardell was not pleased with the developments to say the least. Even though she swore not to get attached, he knew his wife. She loved their two children fiercely, and he worried about the bond she'd form with another child. Furthermore, he was not too pleased about the fact that they would not consummate until she was officially a pregnant surrogate. But when Jessica did fall pregnant, the first ultrasound visit left the whole family gobsmacked. Jessica went for a routine check as per usual, but that day there were surprises waiting for her. As the doctor performed the ultrasound, he noticed something odd. 
he picked up on two little heartbeats, furiously fluttering away. When he told Jessica, her jaw nearly hit the floor. She walked out dazed. As she phoned the couple to let them know, she beamed with excitement. The couple Jessica was carrying for agreed to an hour's worth of bonding time post-birth. This would allow Jessica to properly say goodbye to the little life she'd carried for nine months. Jessica was incredibly grateful for the opportunity. She'd grown fond of the babies. She also couldn't believe how quickly nine months had flown by. It was a bittersweet ending to a surreal chapter in her life, but when she gave birth, everything changed. When Jessica gave birth to the twins, she noticed something peculiar. Something about one of the boys' faces just did not seem to match up. Jessica quickly brushed the thought aside and continued to enjoy her bonding hour. She marveled at the two beings she'd carried for so long, but every time she looked upon them, something just didn't seem right. When the hour was up, Jessica hesitantly handed back the babies, but in her heart, she knew something was just not right. Against her better judgment, Jessica said farewell to the twins. This was difficult at first, but after a few days, things started to look up for her once more. She'd done something remarkable and that made her feel good, but this feeling wasn't to last. One evening, Jessica was preparing for bed. Suddenly, her phone flashed. When she read the message, her heart dropped. The accusatory message was accompanied by a photograph. The more Jessica studied it, the more her fears bumbled to the surface. All in one sickening instant, the realization dawned on her. How had she not seen it before? What Jessica didn't know was that she was about to begin the battle of her life. The message glared back at Jessica. It read, they're not the same, right? It turns out Jessica wasn't the only one perplexed by the twins. A shockwave jolted through her as she realized the horrible truth. But before she could recover, another message came through. This time she was asked a poignant question. The second message read, have you thought about why they are different? Jessica knew the truth in her heart already and was relieved she was not alone. But this didn't make the revelation any less painful. In fact, it made it worse. Jessica braced herself for the blow she knew was coming, but how was it possible? What had she done? One of the babies shared a striking resemblance to her husband Jasper. Her hands started to shake as she thought about the implications, but she brushed her fears aside once more. She didn't even want to think about the possibility that her worst fears were based on reality. There was only one thing to do, she had to know. Jessica and the new mother continued to chat over the phone. The women were discussing what to do now going forward. However, in the backs of their minds, both knew there was only one solution. As the call ended, a DNA test had been called for. This left Jessica in a whirl of confusion. Her brain worked at a million miles per hour, playing out all the possible scenarios. But when the tests came back, all of Jessica's worst fears were confirmed. The DNA test confirmed Jessica's suspicions, and the sheer gravity of what she'd done hit her like a ton of bricks. It was any mother's worst nightmare, and it was happening to her. The realization of what she'd done was almost too much to bear. She'd unwittingly given her own child away. The DNA results left everyone in utter awe. Turns out, one of the twins was actually the biological child of Jessica and her husband. People could not believe what they were told. The twins were a medical anomaly. Once the surrogate couple's embryo had been impregnated, Jessica continued to ovulate during pregnancy. As such, she and her husband were able to conceive while she was carrying. But this is where a ton of problems began to surface. At first, Jessica and her husband were overwhelmed with the news. They were already in a financial bind. But luckily, the surrogacy money would tie them over. Then the excitement kicked in. They had a baby! But this was short-lived. The couple who had what they now knew was their own baby dropped some devastating news. When they began discussions about getting their baby boy back with a surrogate couple, they mentioned that Jessica would have to buy their child back from them. They could either reimburse them the $22,000 they had compensated her or go through the legal adoption of their child, and that's when things got ugly. The couple began to point fingers. They accused Jessica of not following protocol when conceiving, but she swore she had waited until she was declared pregnant before her and her husband consummated. But the couple grew more and more agitated. They made remarks about how she wouldn't see her son again if she didn't pay up. This sent Jessica into a spin. But then the truth about their approach came out. The surrogate couple revealed that they were being influenced by their lawyer to heckle Jessica for payment. Their lawyer had been spinning stories about Jessica to them. He told the couple Jessica had been threatening to sue them for custody of her son. 
turns out, Jessica had never even considered a suit against him. All she wanted was her miracle son Malachi. But there is a happy ending to the story. After much deliberation and one unhappy counsel on the surrogate couple's side, Jessica got her boy back. Now her, husband Wardell, and their two older children could welcome him into their homes. The awesome foursome was now five, and they had never been happier. The little guy doesn't even know what a mark he's made within the news world yet, but all that matters is that he's finally where he belongs.